I am totally alone. My concern is always the fact that if I need help, then I will probably not be in a condition to go find the help myself. My husband and I have been married a long time, but we had our son rather late in life, and so he's pretty young and just the one child, and you know, you don't want to dump your, the responsibility for the parents on him, so uh, we decided we better start looking at things. The more we talked it over, uh, the more we began to realize that we hadn't given a lot of thought to the, our needs in future years. Our son was living in the United Arab Emirates. Our daughter was living in Ethiopia. And we're not any younger. And we thought, how are we going to take care of ourselves? I couldn't stay in my own home. It was important that I knew that where I was going to transition into. But the aim was, is to stay in my own home as long as I can. The first thing that hit me was, you will be taken care of in your home, and when you can't stay in your home anymore, you will bypass the long list of, there's a waiting list to get into the main facility if you have a stroke or you're in some, somehow cannot be in your home any longer. We will take you as the at-home program and put you at the top of the list. That opened my eyes and all I could think about was, oh my goodness, I don't want my children to have to go through. My two kids, I don't have grandchildren, but my children have their careers. One's in California. I wanted to stay at home. If anything happened, I wanted to be at home. And I knew we could be at home, but when there is no we, mm -hmm. then what? Mm -hmm. I had to have my hip replaced. The surgeon was going to send me to a rehab facility for up to a week until I could take care of myself at home by myself since I had no one to take care of me. He was impressed. He had not heard of a program like this. I left the hospital, I immediately went home, and I much preferred being at home during the time that I was recuperating than being in a, a rehab facility. We were on a boat in the Pacific whale watching. It was a small boat. And without looking, I turned around to see a whale and fell down some stairs and absolutely smashed my wrist. I ended up in an emergency room in Mexico in the middle of the night, came home to Lewis and was pretty incapacitated, called our care coordinator, told her what had happened, and um, she asked me what services I might need. And she recommended an occupational therapist. It gives you just a little sense of control and independence and that your life is gonna to return to normal. When um, the care coordinator came to the house and toward the house and pointed out things, oh, this is good for aging in place, the door widths and things like that and the floor coverings, that was something that was completely unexpected. The thing that was the real decider wasn't the money at all, it, it was the case management. And the one thing when you're old that you can't do, especially if you don't have children, is know when you're past it, know when you need things, know what has to be done. And the case management from this program basically supplies you with the connection to the world that you need. Being able to depend on a dependable, a phone call person that has vetted the services that you might need and knows what button to push and where to turn is crucial. I thought I was in perfect health, and six months after I'm a member, I am in Johns Hopkins with major heart surgery. My coordinator, she took care of everything. I did absolutely nothing but learn how to breathe again, seriously. She, I was still in Johns Hopkins for two weeks, Diane contacted my case manager at the hospital, found out what I needed. Then she set up everything in my house. No grocery shopping to worry, how am I gonna drive? How am I gonna, can I lift these things? I was able to claim the initial payment as a medical expense um, and, and it uh, lowered my taxes significantly. The initial payment was tax deductible, absolutely. It wasn't that long after I retired, so I still had, you know, um, some, some cash flow from that. And, um, and uh, we were signing up late in the year, and we managed to, to break our payment into two lumps, one before the end of the year and one after. We actually benefited twice from that. 
uh, everybody was very nice working with us on that. We have used the tax advantage um, very definitely. I also talked to my uh, financial advisor before I joined. He says this fills in the, the holes in your long-term care. Um, not just for us, but for our son too. I mean, he, you know, he grew up an only child and I'm sure in the back of his mind was, oh my goodness, I've got, you know, two relatively elderly parents that are gonna be a burden. And now, you know, he's, he's young, he's still in his 20s and just starting his own life. And, and I think that's taken a, a load off him too. Let's say I had a cataract operation. I needed someone to spend the night there. You don't have to call on your friends or your family. Every time my case manager comes over for a six month visit, uh, I'm reminded once again that I'm not in this alone. Being a same-sex couple is significant to know mm -hmm. that there is care. And that, that is non-judgmental care, yeah, care. That the care will not be a person arriving at your door freaking out because, oh my God, it's two women. I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. What a, it's an absolute gift. Gift.